Hello everyone, today I'm here to introduce the new AdMob plugin for Godot, which supports versions 4.1 and above. This latest version finally brings a highly anticipated feature, mediation. Additionally, it introduces the ability to load multiple ads, custom banner placement, custom banner size, and much more. Compared to the previous version, using the plugin has undergone a complete overhaul. Let's take a look. Of course, before we get started, I'd like to showcase the three existing repositories for this plugin. They are Godot AdMob Plugin, Godot AdMob Android, and Godot AdMob iOS. These three repositories have a README with instructions on how to use the plugin, which should make it easy for people to get started. They show what to do to export and use AdMob in your Godot project, but we also have a dedicated documentation page with clear instructions. We'll be following those instructions. All three repositories have a link that takes you to this documentation. Let's go ahead and click on it. First, let's start with the basics. We'll create an empty project in Godot and then download the plugin. The documentation outlines some prerequisites, so make sure to read it carefully. Now, let's begin downloading the plugin. You have two options. You can either download it directly from GitHub or use the asset library in Godot. I recommend going with the asset library as it will save you some work. First, let's search for the AdMob plugin in the asset lib tab. Remember, the publisher should be Poing Studios. Make sure everything is selected and then click Install. After that, go to Project, Project Settings. In the Plugin section, locate the AdMob plugin and activate it. Great, the plugin is activated. However, there are some mandatory steps we need to follow to make it work for both Android and iOS. Let's start with Android. We need to download the plugin. To do that, go to Project Tools, AdMob Download Manager, Android, latest version. Once it's downloaded, you'll find it in the folder Res Addons AdMob Downloads Android. Now let's download it for iOS. To do that, go to Project Tools, AdMob Download Manager, iOS, latest version. It will be found in the same location, but this time in the folder Res Addons AdMob Downloads iOS. Now we need to install the plugins for both Android and iOS that we've downloaded. Let's start with Android. First, we need to install the Android Build Template. To do this, navigate to Project Install Android Build Template. We'll also need to access the folder Res Android Plugins and extract the contents of the zip file we downloaded earlier. Remember, the contents of the zip file include several folders. One of them is Ads. Enter this folder and copy its contents into the Res Android Plugins directory. For AdMob to function, you only need this folder. However, if you require mediation, like Add Colony, you'll need to do the same for the mediations you want. Now let's add your AdMob app ID. To do this, open the Android Manifest.xml file located in the Res Android Build folder. Add the metadata tag with the name com.google android gms ads. Application underscore ID as shown. 
I've added a test app ID here, but please remember to replace it with your actual app ID before publishing it in production. Now, let's proceed with the export. To do this, go to Project Export and select Android. When exporting, choose Use Custom Build and ensure that AdMob is enabled. If you have mediation, make sure to select AdMob Meta, AdMob Ad Colony, etc. Great, now let's proceed with the export. I've trimmed the video to save time, but the export should be completed successfully. Before we proceed, there's one thing I forgot to mention. We already have a test scene to try out AdMob functionalities. Let's select it by setting it as the main scene for our game. All right, let's go ahead and run the game in the editor. But please remember that AdMob won't work on desktop platforms. It's designed for mobile devices like Android and iOS. Now, let's export the game again for Android and see how it works. This is the test scene running on an Android phone. Here, I'm loading the banner ad at the top of the screen, destroying it, and then loading it again, but this time at the bottom of the screen. Additionally, I'll load and display an interstitial ad. Now that it's working for Android, let's proceed to complete the installation for iOS. If your project doesn't have the iOS plugins folder, create it as I'm doing now. The procedure is similar to what we did for Android. Now, navigate to the Res iOS Plugins folder and extract the contents of the zip file that we downloaded earlier for iOS. Remember, the contents of the zip file include several folders. One of them is Ads. Enter this folder and copy its contents into the Res iOS Plugins directory. For AdMob to function, you only need this folder. However, if you require mediation like Ad Colony, you'll need to do the same for the mediations you want. Step 3, adding the SCAD network items, is only necessary if you're using mediation. Please consult the documentation for more details. Now, let's proceed with the export. To do this, go to Project Export and select iOS. When exporting, ensure that AdMob is enabled. If you have mediation, make sure to select AdMob Meta, AdMob Ad Colony, etc. Also, remember to update the GAD application identifier to include your AdMob app ID before publishing it in production. The app ID provided here is for testing purposes. Now let's go ahead and export the project. If you encounter an archive failed error, don't worry. The project has been exported successfully. This error occurs because Godot doesn't natively support CocoaPods, which we use. We'll resolve this now. After exporting the project, navigate to your project's folder. In this case, it's AdMob sample. Go to AIOS slash plugins slash poingo.admob slash scripts. Now open the terminal in this specific folder. Then execute the provided commands from the documentation. Please note that all the necessary links will be in the video description. This script will convert the project exported by Godot into one with CocoaPods and automatically add the required references. Remember that you'll need CocoaPods installed on your computer for this to work.
At this point, the script is executed successfully, creating a DEX workspace file for us. Let's open it to finalize the configuration. For some reason, CocoaPods doesn't automatically add the frameworks in pods when it comes to a Godot project. We'll do this manually by navigating to the target of your application, then to General, Frameworks, Libraries, and Embedded Content, and add all pods in this section. Now, select all the frameworks and set them to Do Not Embed. A quick tip, you can use Command plus A to select all of them. Now let's run the game. I'll be running it on the simulator. If you're using an Intel-based computer and for some reason it doesn't show the option to run on the simulator by default for a Godot project, there's a link in the documentation you can follow to resolve this issue. Please note that this issue is not related to the plugin. Now let's go ahead and run the project to see how it works. This is the test scene running on an iOS device, and it should have the same functionality as on Android. Here, I'm loading the banner at the top of the screen, destroying it, and then loading it again at the bottom of the screen. Additionally, I'll load and display an interstitial ad. And there you have it! AdMob is up and running smoothly on both Android and iOS. This tutorial doesn't cover everything since there's a lot to explore, but you'll find everything you need for further development in the documentation, including how to load various types of ads such as banners, interstitials, and rewarded ads. Don't forget, we also have a test scene named Main TECN that demonstrates how the plugin works. Feel free to explore it as you wish to gain a better understanding of its functionality. For instance, within this scene, you can learn how to initialize mobile ads, handle the loading event, load banner ads, and much more. It also provides insights into using the user messaging platform for GDPR compliance and specific mediation methods for ad colony, meta, and other networks. Feel free to dive into the documentation where you'll discover how to enable test ads, programmatically add them, implement targeting for child-directed ads, and even explore mediation documentation. This includes integration details for ad colony, installation instructions, available methods, as well as information on Meta and Liftoff magazine, which covers Vungal integration. We also recommend that you access the official AdMob documentation for Android and iOS, as it will always have the most up-to-date information. We kindly request that you consider giving us a star on the repositories. It greatly motivates us. If you find our work valuable and would like to support us, please consider contributing through these platforms. You'll find the link in the description. Thank you very much for using our plugin.